151, the best place to tune into on a Sunday night for Xbox discussions and all kinds of other game industry news. I'm your host, Invader, and I certainly cannot wait to get into all of tonight's topics, as we've got lots and lots of new PlayStation 5 details to to cover and much more. However, first, I'm going to get to all the panel intros, starting off with our guest tonight. Coming from the GRG podcast, we have with us 108 Dragons TV. He's got the nice setup going on there. How's it going, man? Life is good, man. Uh, it is good. This has been a great two weeks, so very excited about these topics, and I appreciate this invite, man. Been waiting to get here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, hey, definitely, brother. Um, it's exciting having you having you on, you know, and uh, we can't wait to get into all these topics. Uh, Centurion buddy, I'll start with you on the TXR panel. Are you ready to dive into all the breaking news from the week? Oh, hell yeah, I'm ready to dive into this. There has been blunders, excitement, there has been a whole plethora of emotions since the last time we've spoke. Yeah, yeah, well, again, it's finally nice to get all these different confirmations on all these things that, you know, were kind of rumored going on, and now we finally got official details. So, again, it's great to have all the con concrete stuff. Uh, moving on down the list, uh, Jeremy, buddy, what's new and exciting? Gentlemen, what's going on? Dragon, thanks for joining. Appreciate that. No hey, we had a few, ch a few times to uh, meet Mr. Dragon. He's a good dude. Very knowledgeable in the industry. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Definitely. Absolutely. Love the guys from GRG. Uh, moving down the list here. Eric Shockley, buddy. How's things going over at your end? Oh, pretty good. Got suckered into, you know, more Nintendo shit with the, <laughs> the Mario 3D All-Stars. So. That game, the it's definitely, for me, it's definitely worth it. Um even though it's how bare bones it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have what's called as an M classic where uh, it also upscales and kind of gets rid of the Jackies. So even though I play Mario 64, um, I use that. It already looks, they've already updated the textures and everything, but I use that on it and there's like no Jaggies on that, which is nuts. But there's only one problem playing in six, uh, Mario 64 is if you know of it, and you probably don't know when you play an N64 because it's so blurry, but when it, Mario gets far away, his face gets like almost turned into a triangle. And so you can see some of these like glaring, like, you know, corners they cut back in, you know, the 90s because you couldn't see it from a long distance when the character's like, for, you know, far away from the screen. So that's like some of the only issues where like you guys couldn't got in there and kind of clean that up. Because now we can see that, and he looks like a triangle face. <laughs> like, dude, uh, I think. I mean, I think the versions look good. Uh, oh yeah, and I, have, I haven't tried it on the on the TV yet. I only played the handheld, so. Uh, oh yeah, handheld. You, know, you probably won't notice. You you'll you notice it maybe slightly, not as much on the TV. But yeah, playing the Sunshine in 1080p looks phenomenal compared to the GameCube version. Um, and Galaxy gets probably the best treatment because it's like they bump that up to 60 FPS and that one looks super clean. So, but yeah, I've been enjoying it. So hopefully the cool thing is that they've made customize these emulators for it. So people are thinking that they might be at least doing like they do with their Super Nintendo, like with Nintendo online. Maybe they'll do an N64 and GameCube thing where you can play these games in a very clean updated version kind of like 64 and sunshine so fingers crossed but that's what i've been playing so far nice nice like i still hold to my first comments on it that i mean i like the idea of a collection of all that I just i wish they would have done something a little more like give it a proper like anniversary yeah edition. at least on the, someone actually hacked a switch and they took that same game and they're running mario 64 in widescreen and at 60 fps like it can do it <laughs> so and, and nintendo themselves did, made sunshine at uh space world back in the early 2000s they showed off sunshine at 60 fps ended up only being 30 fps at release but so it's like they could have done more look at microsoft with the rare replay collection they went above and beyond what nintendo should have done here but you know well, I I yeah i'm even... guilty for picking it up myself 
I'm getting it. <laughs> Only because it's limited run, and I'm going to collect it just to have it. I'm going to pick that up. So, Dude, as soon as my wife saw it, it was like, all right, got to get that. Yeah, on your TV, it looks great. So, well, I might have to check it out then. Uh, moving out here, uh, rounding out the Emerald Crew, Megatron Buddy. Uh, dare I ask how you been? Man, let me tell you, my neck, my back, my neck, and my uh, back. Yo, go on. on. <laughs> I'm on muscle relaxers, ibuprofen, oh, you know, I'm like, I, I don't know, I woke up today in tremendous amount of pain from like my shoulder up to my neck and I'm just, uh, bro, just, but you know, I could not miss my boy 108 Dragons on TXR, finally, man, finally, finally, so happy to have you here, bro, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know behind the scenes, man, you know behind the scenes, but yo, I'm ready to go, let's start the show. Let's do it. Megatron, you know it's time to visit one of those Asian massage parlors now, right? When you're hurting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that behind the scenes, but uh, acupuncture is <laughs> on my list, too. You know, but besides the uh, those type of spas, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, however you, however you want to spin it, buddy. I mean, acupuncture, whatever. Yeah. Gotcha. Acupuncture, gotcha. massage parlor. What's the difference, right, fellas? <laughs> but uh, before we get into all the topics, um, I'd just like to say to everybody who tuned in to share this show out and spread the word that TXR is live at the moment. That would be fantastic. Also, another reminder that we are on a number of popular podcasting services, some of your favorites, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and so many more. Just search TXR, and hey, I'll... I'm sure you'll find us because there's a lot of places that you can find us. All right, fellas, we will start off tonight with the biggest news of the past week, and that was the PlayStation 5 Showcase. The big spotlight being the announcement of the pricing, the regular PS5 with the disk drive costs $499 US, while the all-digital edition is set at $399. We also got new game announcements such as Final Fantasy 16, the new God of War game, and well, a bunch of other little titles as well. You know what? I'm going to start with our guest, 108 Dragons. I'll kick it off with you, bud. What did you think of the PlayStation Showcase? Well, when I watch a showcase, I want to see gameplay. I don't want to see people on the screen talking you to death about what, what they're promising. Um, I thought it was real, real good. I gave it like a uh, a plus or <laughs> because they really just got in there they showed you the games they didn't bs you around um they dropped some titles that we haven't seen before that's always a pleasure to see and then they finished off strong with the price and the teasing of god of war ragnarok so i was happy that's one of my favorite characters on the sony platform so i think they did an excellent job of the presentation and they stuck to the guns they didn't really you know nobody really likes to talk in and you know not in a situation like that. People want to see games. So I really, I, I, I was impressed with the showcase. Yeah, I was surprised with the Final Fantasy, uh, you know, timed exclusivity. That was right. huge for Sony for sure. Right. Uh, but I think the big news was that three ninety nine digital price tag, even though it is limited. Uh, I mean, this is, let's be honest, this is what they've been doing for over 25 years and what kind of appeals for, to people around the world. Uh, as for them, you know, blundering the fucking pre-orders, I mean, some of it was some of it wasn't their fault. I mean, you had retailers like GameStop who jumped the gun. Mm -hmm. Once that happened, everybody fell online. And that's, you know, that's pretty much how it goes around the industry. Someone breaks street date, uh, which is not a hefty price tag as it used to be. Um, you know, well, that's what that's I heard, what Walmart was the first one to break. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, once someone fell off the, you know, fell in line, everybody the whole the whole dam broke, you know. So that's what happened. Um, they nobody was ready for the amount of traction that these companies or Sony was going to get as far as pre-orders goes. Couldn't Sony um, called everybody else and like, yeah, but told them, "Hey, don't go up." I, I have no idea about that, but I'm talking about if you have a bunch of people trying to log on digitally to. To, I mean, every almost every website crashed. At least I was on crashed, so I physically had to pick up uh, my my pre order at GameStop, which I'm probably going to be doing for the X and the S. Now, um, Downer. Yeah. 
the there's a reason why they crashed one. There was a lot of people, but also it's a tactic of scalpers to use bots to actually uh, de to, to DDoS the website and shut it down. So that way nobody can make purchases. It's actually a tactic of people who uh, make a career out of doing this. So, yeah, but what I'm saying is it, regardless, they wouldn't have been ready for the sheer amount of people that were on it. I mean, I, they're, they're not going to DOS every single uh, retailer. I mean, uh, it was just insane. Well, yeah, that's where I was saying uh, about a few weeks ago that um, I know through uh, what I know of like Shopify, um, the website can only hold about 60,000 uh, people in queue. Uh, wanting to make purchases, and when literally the whole world is trying to log on to the website at the same time, yeah, you're going to see a lot of problems. So I would say that if you, know, you say these hackers or whatever you want to call them uh, do what they're supposed to be, I mean, it would be an advantage to Sony because they'd have less time to plan something like this as opposed to Xbox. We knew it's going to go. Li we know it's going to go live on the 22nd at 9 a.m., uh, you know, Mountain Standard Time, which is my time, they have more time to uh, cause chaos. Wouldn't you say that? Yes, um, but the Catch-22, at least from the arguments that from uh, some of the stuff I watch, um, the only people who were prepared for this pre-order were the people that had these bots that were already set up. They knew that it was imminent. People watched this Sony event. They saw the price. They walked away from it feeling great. And they were like, well, um, Sony uh, came out and said that pre-orders start tomorrow. And there is some people that literally even put out tweets that said they went to bed that night because, um, you know, in the United Kingdom, man, it's like eight hours ahead. So some people in the United Kingdom went to bed that night going, oh, I'm going to pre-order my PS5 tomorrow. And then it's a freaking wasteland the when they wake up eight hours later. So um, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. Whoever broke the street day, whether it was Walmart or GameStop, once that happened, it just created a whole havoc of problems. You know, it's not necessarily uh, yeah. Sony's problem. I'm not I'm not, you know, shying away from the fact that, yeah, Sony had something to do with it. But, yeah, you have retailers that were breaking street day or however you want to call it or name it. Um, that was the problem. Now, I'm curious if there's going to be any consequences on the retailers because we've seen some of the stuff that Microsoft has put out stating that they would actually kind of cancel all a retailer's pre-orders if they find out they go before the street date. Knowing, um, so. knowing what I know about regulations and street date violations, no, it's a slap in the hand. It really is. It they don't care, is. which is why, which is why they work street <coughs> date in the first place. Well, well why have right? I mean, let me chime in on this Microsoft. Why not break those rules? <laughs> let me let me chime in real quick. Let me, first of all, after the situation happened, after the showcase happened, I told y'all literally, I got a call a minute later. Saying tomorrow's the go time, but 30 40 seconds later, after that, I got off the phone, he called me right back. It was go now. That was not Sony because if they get if they get exactly. told, tomorrow's the day, I don't know who jumped first, Walmart or GameStop. From what I know, it wasn't even five minutes after the showcase, it was minutes. Well, like I don't know minutes. about physical purchases like what you did. I'm talking the first online retailer to go live. Right. Uh, in the United States, it was Walmart. In the UK, it was a company called Games, which is actually affiliated to GameStop. I know that for a fact that game was in there because I got a good friend of mine that's out there in uh, London. <coughs> he went immediately, and that you know I know that those those uh, you know, they told him to come down. Like he was up early, early in the morning, and he was uh, he went physically to the store and uh, pre-ordered his console. So, and you know what, uh, Walmart that, that blew and Amazon, my mind. They're kind of like bad examples because they have so much money they do what they want to do and nobody challenges them like mm -hmm. they don't allocate a certain amount of people pre-orders and say oh yeah we're gonna stop they'll take a million pre-orders and make y'all wait you know walmart got that type of money too so they're kind of like the bad example you know what i'm saying because they have like unlimited pockets and nobody's gonna tell amazon oh we're gonna smack you in your hand because you pre-ordered early they're not going to do that. That's the number one retailer on, on the planet. So it's just, it's just, it's just messed you know up what? with the real fans that really wanted to get them and can't get their hands it, on them. 
You know, it doesn't make sense from just a pure I'm going to sell console standpoint to break street day because every single company, whether it's Best Buy, whether it's GameStop, they know exactly how many they're getting allocated, you know, two or three weeks down the line. They already know that information. What they want to sell is all the software. They make their money is the software. Where they make their money is, you know, the accessories. So that's the reason why these guys jump the gate and why they break street date to be the first and you know to get pre-orders on that mm-hmm. not I even think. all the games that are available at launch was able to be pre-ordered either in GameStop I only got two well, do they even know the games that are all available yet well you know? they yes. had Demon's Souls yeah, and they, they had they Spider-Man know. They know ahead of time that stuff's on their computer. You know, for example, when I launched the 360, I knew a couple weeks in advance all the accessories I was getting, all the games I was getting. I think for the 360, it was like 11 or 12 launch titles. Maybe it was even 16. So I knew that going, uh, you know, what was going on as far as that goes. So no Miles Morales, though, for launch day? Or was it, no, it, it was, was, it was the there. launch. It was there. So Miles is going to be available for launch. That wasn't in the computer. That wasn't in the computer. But they had the the headset, the charging, the charging dock, uh, and the camera. I ain't getting none of that, but that's what they had. Demon they Souls, had is, yeah. Demon Souls is going to be a launch title for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. That's, that's not my genre of game, but I do enjoy it. You know, it's not my first pick, but Demon's Souls was, to me, one of the most outstanding I've seen. More than, more so than Miles Morales, even though Demon's Souls is in... You know, how long has it been since it came out now? Um, well, it's been years. The, yeah. Years. What, 2006? <laughs> yeah, something yeah, like crazy. that. So, but it impressed me the most visually. Um, it, just right there with Ratchet & Clank. Miles Morales are good, but uh, those are the games that stuck out to me the most. It was... It was Demon Souls and Miles Morales, and also for the show that stood out to me was the four hundred dollar price point, which I think was great. Caught me off guard. You know, I was thinking maybe four seventy five and five fifty, literally when it came to the console pricing. Um, but uh, yeah, um, man, I am so foggy right now <laughs> with these, this, this this stuff I'm on. Um, I would, if I had to rate the show, I would give it a seven. I was disappointed with um, some of the games. A lot of it to me was just filler, Mm -hmm. you know, like it was just, you know, I want to see stuff that's just going to really kind of just blow my mind, man. So when I see games like Abe, you know, uh, you know, uh, Odd World and, you know, Deathloop, they're great games and all, but it's just because it didn't really do it for me, man. I just kind of thought it was kind of a. A disappointing show overall. I wanted more. I expected more at least from Sony. Um, but I don't know. Go figure. It's just uh, my opinion on things. I mean, Resident Evil, a lot of the stuff was multiplats. Harry Potter, I mean, that's all multiplat stuff. Final Fantasy 16, of course, but that's um, didn't look better to me than Final Fantasy 7. So, um, no, I don't think so. The remake. So, but uh, I that's just me. I was, I, was, I, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was so. stunned with that, but you know, mm-hmm. I don't like that exclusive stuff for a year, a couple months, okay, but a year is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it's six months, um, and then the PC gets it, and then Xbox right. after a year will uh, get it. I don't like it either, but I mean, it's Square Enix and Sony. They have kind of a a relationship a strong rela- relationship and yeah I, I could see you know sony dishing out a lot of cash just to uh you know get some more spotlight right i mean they're not gonna have a very studded uh launch lineup either same with microsoft so you know they'll be they'll be grabbing whatever uh can i ask mm-hmm. uh, there was no release date on that either for final fantasy was there no no, no. no. <clears throat> straight trailer so um, not to God come off as a freaking cheesy nerd. Uh, was anybody at all interested in the Hogwarts game? No, I am. See that? that <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, okay, I'm a I'm movie guy, total, so anything with my movie, favorite characters, yeah. I'm interested in. Yeah. Well, it looked cool. If from well, from what I hear, it's like done as a prequel before all the stuff that like all the movies. So. You know, it looks it looks some Centurion looks more interesting than the previous uh, Harry Potter games for sure. Well, you know, all yeah. the previous Harry Potter games weren't they all just Lego games? I haven't really. 
I think See, there's no, been others. There was, there's been others. Back in the PlayStation uh, era, yeah, PlayStation Two era, <laughs> yeah, there was a few uh, a few Harry Potter games. Well, I well here's the thing. Like when it comes to universes like Star Wars or um, Harry Potter or stuff like that, there's the characters you like, and they everybody always thinks like, "Oh, you want to play as this guy." And I really do like it when you're in that world, but you're not those characters. You get to kind of experience it in your w- own way, kind of like um, why uh, Kotor was so kind of spectacular back in the day because it was the Star Wars world, and you weren't like a predetermined character. You had the ability to create your own character. Same with what's right. going on with this Hogwarts game. I actually enjoy uh the the world that um oh my god, what's her damn name? The one that created Harry Potter. JK Rowling. Yeah, I enjoy the world that JK Rowling Rowling created and I think it's really cool now that it's like an RPG esque uh way to kind of create your character and go experience this world and do it the way you would want to do it. She sounds like she's a great in her mind right now. The uh, recent news: she's created a new world. I don't know where, I don't know oh, where I, she's I, going. Well, we, don't go, we don't go too deep into it, but she's just like on some other, uh, some other stuff. Maybe the stuff I'm on right now. I don't know. <laughs> so, like, well, look at look at Johnny Depp. Look at Johnny Depp, man. He is an amazing actor. I loved him as Captain Jack Sparrow, but he can be off his rocker at times. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. And that him and Amber heard. <laughs> yeah. Now, at first, I thought the digital PS5 was going to like maybe hamper some of the uh, Series S, but being as how few uh, digital units there's going to be, and I think there's going to be a ton. You know, I don't. I mean, they'll probably sell out for both the S and the X, but like, I think they're going to have a ton of supply. Well, this is so. this is initially shock. This is not a continuous production. I think uh, late, when you get six months down the line, a year down the line, that three ninety nine price tag is going to hurt Xbox. You know, especially when you know uh, that it's just a digital box. It's just a you know has all the raw power of the PS five. It's not a um, you know, a tight inversion of the X. Well, there's two ways you could look at that. And I listened to your show last week talk about the S. And the S is doing something that nobody else is paying attention to. Anybody that bought TVs in 2018 and 2019, those TVs are 1440p at 120. And so are their monitors because those monitors are very affordable. The target, the target of 4K for the X for the for the PS5 only 1% on Steam even touch touch 4K. Everybody else is 1080p and 1440p and there's way more people at 1440p that's on 4K. And they're well, reaching a market that when you buy a series at S you don't have to upgrade your TV if you bought a TV in the last 2 years. But if you buy X or PlayStation 5 and you want 4K 120 you're going to have to make two purchases to take advantage of what these systems could do because I know you just don't want to buy a system and it still looks like if you got a 1080p TV you ain't going to see no difference or you got a a, a TV that just doesn't do uh, 1440p at 120 or 4K at 120 you want to take advantage so anybody that's stepping up their game to those two big boys they're going to have to spend money for a TV to take advantage of what the TV to do compared to the Series X I mean Series S which the market was flooded last year with 1440p monitors at 144 refresh rate or 120 refresh rate, they sold thousands of TVs in monitors like that last year and a year before. So you got to look at that two different ways. Not just the power, you got to look at the demographic of casual people who can actually take advantage of the Xbox Series S. That's key. You know, you can get a 4K TV now for, you know, under 150 bucks. But they you don't know, do he's ta- he's, But he's they talking, do he's talking frame rates and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, or yeah, so not, they don't do those, they don't do those numbers. Right. You're 100% they don't do it. correct. 100% correct when you're talking frame rates. I remember, well, my TV is 4K, but it only does 60, uh, you know, 60, 60 hertz. hertz. Right. Um, you know, I'm going to have to upgrade unless I want to go to a monitor. You know, but you so, might even have to upgrade because how many games you're going to have out there are going to be 120 frames per second in the first place? I it's mean, not. It's not too Halo many. But hey, you really want that option? You that. want that Halo, option? Halo Infinite is going to be 120 frames. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to want to upgrade just for that. Multiplayer yeah. alone is what is 120 does not affect single player gaming. Yep. 
It's You're all right. multiplayer. It's all multiplayer. So when you start getting your behind whipped in an upgraded PUBG or Fortnite, you're going to want to step your game up because this dude got milliseconds on you. And if you're competitive, that's just what it is. What because that's, I think that's what that matters. all access this is, why I never is going to be a ranked. big seller too. Like $25 yeah. or even yeah. just 35 and I get the top of the line. Yeah. That undercuts the digital. Mm-hmm. By that's, by a lot, <laughs> and you get the Game Pass Ultimate with it for two years. So two years, that's right. That that deal is just well, that's amazing. <laughs> there's also no, there's also another thing the S has in its court. I keep uh, championing the fact that the that Microsoft has made it very well known that you're going to get a a majority of next gen upgrades free of charge. I said majority, not all. Uh, the cost of gaming um, is a lot less on the Xbox ecosystem, especially with uh, services like Game Pass and how now they have EA Access in with it. Um, as, a, as a parent that lives their life on a budget, when you find out that you can get your kid a $300 console and pay $15 a month and they would have access to a game library that would have first-party studio titles day and date the day they come out, because the funny thing is, um, we all know how it probably works in school nowadays. Kids aren't talking about the games that end up in PS Now six, eight months, 12 months later. They're talking about the games that come out yesterday. And right. a lot of kids want to be able to play the games of today. And a service like Game Pass giving access to that without having to fork out 60 70 80 $100 for a game. I'm sorry, but that definitely speaks loudly to somebody especially living life on a budget well not only that is when they have uh you know game pass the ability to stream from the cloud is huge you know sony doesn't have that so um you know that's the deal breaker for xbox that's what they got to promote to people the fact that you know you can have your phone and every kid has i every kid i know has a damn phone nowadays where they could stream uh, their Xbox games and play their games on it is is huge. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Uh, before we move on, uh, thanks to uh, Techno Fabulous for the ten dollars super chat. Thanks a lot, John. Always appreciate your support. Um, guys, did you notice the uh, the PS Plus collection announcement that happened? Uh, Sony unveiled that they have a new feature for their subscription service <laughs> that lets subscribers play a range of PS4 games on the PS5. <laughs> It'll be available at launch. I think there's, a, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 games on there, if I'm not mistaken. Games like The Last Guardian, um, Infamous Se- Second Son, a whole bunch of third party, I think, Fallout's in there. What do you guys uh, think of this? Because they have a small selection of games here, but, I mean, in comparison to Xbox's backwards compatibility, Xbox is going to have thousands of games available uh, for the Xbox Series S launch in comparison. Like, well, they, ha- they had... I'm oh, sorry, Centron, but they, oh, real fine. quick, two points. They had to do something about to counter Xbox's game cloud capabilities with Game Pass, uh, you know, and on top of that, um, I mean, it's just the day and date stuff, you know, it's huge for Xbox. Those are the two deal breakers for everybody. Uh, they had to do something to counter that. Yeah, it's a nice selection of games, but it's not enough. And Sony knows it. I mean, even Yoshida said that, hey, it's not it's not Game Pass, but, you know, <laughs> this is what we're going to do for you guys. <laughs> yeah, it is. Funny. Take it or leave it. It is pretty funny, Yoshida <laughs> even saying that, yeah, you know, it's not Game Pass, but, you know, it, it's good enough, guys. It's good enough, even though, you know, you're paying it's, for it. It's in your kind system. of shit, but, hey, you, you know, I, I mean, but it's a good collection. So. Uh, it's 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 most of the first party titles. They got a couple mm-hmm. third parties thrown in there. Um, Resident Evil, um, Fallout. Um, but this is this is my thing. You know, they dropped the ball on giving information to the consumer. Can I plug my disc in my PlayStation Five and still play it, or do I have to download it from the? See, that, that that's because my question. Because I have all of those games they mentioned, and that's what they didn't clarify. Because I could just trade all that stuff in. I don't need my PS4. Well, you got to keep your controller because the controllers are not forward compatible. So if you have a PlayStation 4 game on your PS4, you can't use your new DualSense controller. So I think that was crazy, too. I think it's all tied to your having just PS Plus. Yeah, you can't use uh, PlayStation 5 controllers on PS4 games, which 
It has the same amount of yeah. buttons. I don't. Which even, is hilarious because <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a cross gen game. Right, it's a cross gen game. Can't, oh, yeah. can't um, but, yeah, that's just that's just a that's just a software thing. That's just the you know just Centurion was going to say something. We're going to say Centurion. I was actually just going to kind of start with what uh, 108 Lemon was saying over here because, oh my God. I have a lot of questions because, like, seriously, to me, I have always said that PlayStation locks backwards compatibility behind a paywall, and I feel like this is just another uh, very well-placed hidden paywall. Um, like, are you like unless you own these games digitally, like um, Dragon was saying over here, can you um, put your disc in this machine, and is it going to run it? Or do you have to have this PS Now subscription service to play this game, or do you got to rebuy it digitally? Like, I, there is a lot of questions about their backwards compatibility. Um, no, you, you well, no, they digital. didn't. They didn't put it in PS Now. It's part of PlayStation Plus. I'm which, sorry, PlayStation. I'm sorry, which PlayStation is better? Plus. PlayStation Plus. <laughs> I want the PlayStation uh, Now experience. But I don't know. Like, uh, they have been very, very. Um, I hate to use the word shady. Um, but they have been very skeptical, not skeptical, like they haven't been very informative on much when it comes to backwards compatibility. How many people came out and put it on Twitter that there was going to be forwards and backwards compatibility across all generations on the PS5? What was that and, engine called again? It was called a uh, remastering engine, right? What happened with that? I guess it's going to stop with uh, <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> oh, I got to say no names to my brother. You know I what? Love that. I out there like that, re regarding that Centurion, even Sony doesn't know. I mean, this was just a okay, the fans want it, so and there was a huge uh outcry of it. Now we're gonna do it. That's what it well, came so down to. Sony so does Sony knows what they want to do. They just you could definitely see there's a lot of reluctance behind it. Sony, right, Sony, that, Sony should be full steam ahead because when they drop that PS3, you can play PS1 and PS2 on it. With the fat system, and then they stopped making that system, and I think that system was three ninety nine at the time, something like that. Mm -hmm. But you could trade in if you had that backwards compatible version, you could trade in the GameStop for almost three hundred dollars. And you know, once the system leaves the store, it's worth nothing. Then that that system kept kept its value for years. That system was like six hundred, I think. No, the PS get, yeah, the PS three was six hundred. You're right, six hundred. Yeah, 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 right. Five and six. Drive, I, got, I, I, I got one here sitting on the entertainment center. Nice. The one that plays PS one and two and three. Don't ever, yeah, never it's been disconnected. Don't get rid of that. It, it's been disconnected from the power. I don't let it near power at all. It just sits up there. I don't want anything to ever happen to it. It's got the hidden SD drive underneath the door and everything. Mm. I, I mean, I it was a gift from my boss because he was cleaning out um, his house and he was the guy that would buy everything. And that was a day. That was a it was a launch console. And he's like, I don't want this thing. Do you want it? And I'm like, Hell yeah, I want this wow. damn thing. But the, but I got it for like ninety five dollars because it got the, discontinued. The and value they that it left it that on it, my chart. That it, <laughs> excuse me, my bad. The value that no, it kept. Good. They should they should understand that people because when people buy a system, all of us here have the same problem. We have a back catalog of games we just need to play because we get everything we want. So you want to bring that stuff with you. You don't. That's a lot of wasted money if you can't use it or you got to start keeping systems all over the place that's not my thing i get rid of systems when next generation starts so i'm happy we could play everything from from beginning of xbox to now because i have a huge catalog i have over 750 games i'm right there with you bro i'm right there with you <laughs> so they should know the value they should know the value just because of their own experience on what they decided to do mm -hmm. with the ps they don't care that's what it is. They like, nope, we moving forward, and um, <laughs> that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, and it's just like I have a lot of games in my backlog to play as well. But there will be a few games that I'm definitely gonna pick up just to, you know, ha I'll have these consoles, and well, I'm hoping to pick up a Series X when the pre-orders go up. <laughs> but I did manage to snag a PS5, as I was alluding to in the chat. And, man, oh, man, a lot of people are having issues with that. But, yeah, I'll, I will definitely snag uh, a few of the games on there. Uh, what's everybody hoping to pick up, game-wise? Oh, I'm picking up uh, Demon Souls for sure. That's I'm happy to just to get a console. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> the Souls, so that's it. Demon Souls, basically only because of the way it looks, and um, probably Spider Man, Spider Man, because I haven't played it yet, and uh, so I won't have to pay uh, pay for it twice, right? So you like how they're going the five hundred five <laughs> route, where you have to. They're, they said no one that bought the digital uh, Spider Man is going to get good. the remaster on PS Five. You have to buy the seventy dollar bundle. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> it's like, weren't you guys? Weren't you the same people? Uh, you know, bitching about the <laughs> five hundred five doing the same thing with control. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. No one's saying anything about Sony. So. Well, Sony's message. They're going to do that been... with all of those games. Last of Us Two. It's going to get a remaster. They're going to charge you for it. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Sony's messaging hasn't exactly been the best the past uh, couple of months, and we'll uh, obviously get more into uh, some other messaging of theirs that's gone a little haywire. But it's almost like you look at the contrast between this 2013 with Xbox and their messaging and uh, Sony over here. It's I like I don't know if it's as bad, but still, it just it's not exactly a good look for them going into the the launch. And I know the pre order like the pre order situation again is not very good uh, because a couple of months ago they were saying that oh yeah we will let everybody know ahead of time everybody's gonna have ample time to pre order these systems because you know every, everybody was saying there's gonna Dude, be limited I think availability. That's what makes it so much worse. Because, like, when you have your marketing guy come out and say that, and then it turns out to be a lie, it just makes it so much worse. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even, like, a blatant, like, oh, he's changed his stance. No. In June, they blatantly misled you, made you, because they they clarified which games were coming to PS4. Uh, I think, like, Kenna, like, there's a few other games that said PS4, PS5. There was an article from Insomniac. People were asking him, hey, is this coming to PS4, Miles Morales? They didn't say shit. So there was an said, article oh, from Insomniac. Generational that... transitions, <laughs> my ass. There was that I article was from Insomniac that said that uh, Spider-Man was only possible on the PS5. Mm. Remember, like that was like Sounds from like Insomniac. I just had so many Sony fans <laughs> saying Miles Morales is impossible on the PS4. I'm like, are you fucking? Are you? I'm sorry. Well, are I you got, serious? I, I have you looked too. at the game? What tells you that's not possible? What about like, Horizon what? Zero Dawn? That's another now that's one. going to PS4. Ooh. Well, they said about <laughs> the flying thing. They said oh, in PS4, so... the devs said we couldn't put our flying mechanics in there because there wasn't enough. It wasn't able to do it on the PS4. Mm-hmm. Cool. Are but, they not going to be in there in the second one now because it's on cross gen game? What, what was they supporting the SSD? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, invader. Yeah, guys. I, you oh. know what? Uh, I will transition to because this is going on to uh, a separate topic. I will transition onto it uh, because this is very much related, obviously. Because um, with what Jim Ryan said right recently, because uh, he backtrack on he backtracked on a lot of uh, Sony comments and his own comments regarding all like all these cross gen games. That Sony is going to be supporting the PS4 for another three to four years, right, guys? And bringing titles like Spider-Man, like we just said, Horizon 2, and even I, I think that Sackboy Adventures games. But there's a few games out there. Yep. So both are going to be going to PS4 and PS5. And again, this is only coming after a couple of months of uh, Ryan just talking about believing and well, console generations and, like, uh, you know, s- different games and the power. Now, like, Centurion, I'll obviously go to you first. Like, what do you th- what do you think specifically of, like, we have all kinds of comments here, but with Ryan's comments specifically, because for months, like, upon months, Xbox was getting shade for having cross-gen support and just being really open to gamers. And, you know, how does this make Sony look? Well, before um, we go on to directly Sony, I just want to put out there, for those who were all over Twitter cha- um, spouting off with that Xbox is going <laughs> to uh, suck because they are going to worry about an older generation of console for one to two years, um, and that certain things were only possible on the PS5 because of blah, 
you guys can go and grab your box of Frosty L's and go sit in the corner and enjoy mm. that shit. Um, I, at this point, I am tired of hearing them run their mouths over stuff that they absolutely know nothing about. And I absolutely hope including the media right now, including the, including the media. Oh, dude. Like, I, and six, and no Ryan way. McCaffrey, that dude is a freaking fool coming out <laughs> saying, oh, Final Fantasy is a big snag for Sony. Oh, it's just it's how it should work. And uh, on all that, oh, wow. that, and then compared to his tweet when freaking all of a sudden he found out that to- Rise of the Tomb Raider was going to be an Xbox exclusive, and he's like, "Oh, this just hurts the industry. You're holding back other gamers." And it's like, "Oh my god, dude, why don't you go take your pair of flip flops and so sit much down?" So hard we ask these gaming journalists to be consistent. Like, oh yeah, on, it was it's one, it's good for one, it's good for the other. That's how you feel. That's how you feel about both consoles. First, it was DRM. You know, we're not going to do this. And now here we go again. <laughs> here we go again with, you know, uh, cross-gen games. And, oh, my God, I can't we're going to do that. And it's going to hold back gaming. And now look what Sony's doing. The, the market leader. They just sit back and they let them go first, take all the heat, take all the damn heat, and then all of a sudden look what we have now. I'm just mm-hmm. – No, just I, I feel you, man. I, I mean, I, I know this is your You know thing. what? No, I don't blame the journalists, man. These guys are in both Microsoft and Sony's pockets. I don't and think who, they're in whoever, as deep of Sony's no, as no, Microsoft yeah. pockets as they yeah. are with Sony. Yeah, but but yeah, no, of course, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I'm gonna be up, I'm gonna be like, have, have they're, you guys? They're, like, they're in, feeding in podcast, to. But in podcasting, you, how easy is it to get a Sony executive on a show compared to a Microsoft executive? I mean, yeah. like, exactly. you want to pull your teeth out with a screwdriver. Yeah, they're not yeah, even they're relevant. Not, the other they're, thing not, is, they're not even so, reachable. Nowadays, we know enough people that know more than these 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 IGNs and game spots in the first. Like, end I, I'm not trying to be an ass in what I'm saying, but in my opinion, if I was Microsoft, I'd be pissed at the media, and at this point, I'd be figuring out ways to cut them out. And that's why I think it's really great. Like, look at what happened after uh, Xbox's July event. Larry Erb made an appearance on, like, four or five shows. He was freaking everywhere. Like, Microsoft acknowledges... Who's in people's basements? They've been doing that for a long time. And in a sense, since you're on, they have cut them out. And now they're relying more on, you know, YouTube, uh, YouTube streamers, you know, uh, content creators like yourself, you know, different people to spread the message. And they realize that they have more of an impact than, say, an IGN. And that's why uh, IGN has us on the show right now, which I firmly believe the reason why they have, they're bringing on their so called guests is because they're doing their, their, they suck. To me, GRG is better than IGN. <laughs> Iron Lord's mm-hmm. podcast is better than uh, IGN. Oh, dude, I tuned to into the better. Iron Lords for oh. Sony's event. Everybody in the United Guild Gaming Guild is better to me than IGN. And, you know, right mm-hmm. now we can go right on Twitter. They tweet the stuff out and they get the same stuff we know. But it's one reason, though. That's it. Because mm-hmm. we actually are gamers that's giving our honest opinions. Facts. And there is no check behind it. Mm-hmm. It's do- we doing it out the love of the love of gaming. So a lot of people, like... They work at these places. They need to keep their jobs. I don't need to keep my job. Not not for gaming because that's what I think they're feeding into. Lemon. I think they're just they're doing the feed. They're they're getting money. It's not even. I I think they're more in the fanboyism. That's the pocket that they're in. No, no, I think think so. I just think that's what they're trying to get. They want that. I think some of them are because some things they just say is crazy. Well, and, and they probably don't even. (laughs) How petty does it sound to say pay me or I talk crap about you? Well, no, this is the reason why they don't talk crap is because there's a repercussion if they do. Like Sony and Microsoft, they just won't they won't give you more content. They won't give you these, you know, these gifts that they throw at, at these creators. You know, they won't give them cash to market their 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 products. So in, in a sense, they take a hit from this stuff. If they say one wrong thing, if they send one bad thing, they're blacklisted automatically. Yeah, and this I, is think why. Also, I think Have us as gamers and, and content creators are plugged in too as well. And they take a hit definitely from all of us when they say stuff that we know mm-hmm. is just straight trash. Well, well, that's, I think we and matter. It, I there's think also matter. the difference when you tune into a show that is done by IGN and we got Ryan McCaffrey over here playing the game of it. Well, we're tuning into an Xbox show and it's like, oh, let's see what Xbox has to uh 
to make us happy because we're all unhappy. The Xbox has to make us all happy. And if they're watching a PlayStation event, oh my God, we're going to see some amazing things tonight. PlayStation is going to just show mm -hmm. us so many hey, amazing things. Hey, Centurion, I don't care. Let me get up and use the bathroom real quick. Show. I'll be right back. Let's not forget about that nonsense. Let Which me get would? up in the middle of doing a let me, in the middle of a show, a pre-show. Oh, let me get up and use the bathroom real quick. You know, oh, stuff God. like that that should not happen, man. I just ugh. Well, I wouldn't. So I, I wouldn't. I can't use the bathroom. I wouldn't. I wouldn't paint them all <laughs> with the same brush. All the journalists, because some a real gamer would just go right there. If you're a real gamer, you just piss on your Get pants. the bucket. Get the bucket, kid. Get the bucket. <laughs> yeah. Get the. Yeah, exactly. Because again, this is we're all grassroots. You know, we all love it. Like you know, we'll hold it in right the entire time. Like we'll be in pain for crying out loud just to be able to talk to these people. And it's amazing some of the whining and the bitching that the uh, you know these all access media have you know they get all the the inside out way before we do and i i wouldn't paint them all with the same brush because there are uh good people like good journalists there in the media yeah but right no but at the same time it's like i think sony and microsoft and other publishers are realizing that grassroots podcasts are starting to be the way to go to promote their stuff because we're the ones that actually hype this stuff up we're the ones that actually you know we live and breathe like their products you know and we're the ones that do all like the real reviews i mean heck you got ign stealing reviews for crying out loud right plagiarism look at <laughs> well, our own pockets look well, at living well, setup bro that's official official right there <laughs> we're coming out of our own pockets <laughs> back that's on the, to do it for the love of the uh, game Oh my god. No, but that's no, but it's true though. Like we do it because we love the hobby. It's the hobby for us. Like uh right. somebody alluded to earlier, like it's their job, uh, first and foremost, but you know, maybe a hobby second, and they get all the uh the special exclusives and all that because of their job. Whereas us, you know, we put the extra time into it, you know, we have to like set everything up. We have we, we all have other jobs, whereas these guys, you know, again, it's their number one primary source of yeah. income. You know what, Invader? Again, I do not blame the journalists. I want you to put the put yourself in their shoes. Imagine saying something on Twitter that, and you see it time and time again with people overreacting, and they'll send hate mail. They'll send hate mm -hmm. DMs to these people just because they said one thing against their console, one thing against their Xbox, one thing against their PlayStation. And that's the problem now. Everybody's too goddamn sensitive. Mm. They can't say what's on their mind, so they have to pick a side. That's the re reality of the industry. Well, well down a, yes down and no. Or well, okay. Lemon can go first, yeah. No, go ahead, Sin. You good, you good. I'll wait. I just wanted to say that um, picking aside, do your the idea of doing journalism. See, like the subject at hand is the fact that there has been a lot of stuff that has come out recent, like in the past seventy two hours, about games that we thought were only possible on the PS five, games that we thought that were only going to be on the PS five are now appearing on the PS four. Um, I feel like if some of these journalists were just to kind of stop with the ooh and ah treatment of PlayStation and ask some real down-to-earth journalistic questions, maybe some of this information would have been out there instead of it being a freaking a, a total magic show. Sleight of hand. That's all but I who, want to say. Well, who do you who do you, you listen? We know on Twitter we got a whole bunch of complaining people, but you know most people really don't complain on Twitter. It's the people that complain that got the biggest voice because they never stop complaining. So if you are scared to say something because you you're getting flack for it or you're getting hate mail, you have to look at those people that do that hate mail stuff. There has to be something wrong with them. There's really nothing wrong with you for telling your opinion or giving the facts. That's what's that's what's wrong with this this whole situation. It's like my boy tried to explain to me about Brad Sams and he put out the S situation, right? The series S. Now when he did that, YouTube and Twitter lit up overnight because I seen that post two minutes after it happened and I was like, yo, what just happened? He had a official he had an official picture of the system and everything. That's not no that's not a mistake. That's a strategic move because everything you got to realize YouTube is more watched than TV. So if anything goes up there and it's hot, everybody's going to get it, especially when you give it to somebody like that. And then you got all these other content creators jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, this dude broke the news. The Lockhart is real. 
That's what Microsoft is doing. They're not using IGN in them. If you see with, with, the, with the Xbox One X, all the naysayers, like Digital Foundry. Oh, we don't see how six teraflops can do 4K native. So did Mark Saney. That's not enough power for 4K 60 frames a second with 4K textures. This came out people who supposed to know what they're talking about. What's the first thing Microsoft did? Come to our studio. Check this out. Now, tear, tear down Richard Ledbetter leaves. I don't know how they did it because you ain't no damn engineer. That's why you don't know how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying what people can do. You have to. That's why they give it to they. They give it to the people who knock them. You know, Phil gives Ryan McCaffrey these one on ones, and then he don't have nothing to say. But when you on your own show and doing your own thing, I'm not knocking that. But they always change the narrative. It's like Microsoft. No matter what they do, they are constantly on a proving ground. They don't have to prove anything. They've showed you 50 million consoles is the mark, the magic mark for any system to be successful. And we're killing you in revenue. Killing you. And you got double the systems out there. They obviously know something. Next you know. generation starts at two ninety nine. dollars It's going to sell like hotcakes. Yes, it is. You know, but getting back to uh, the topic... You know, did they lie about cross-gen plans? I mean, I don't think they lied, but I think they got a lot of pressure from their shareholders for sure. Seeing, you know, you guys seen the movement. You know, there was some move on Twitter uh, conversations going that Sony stock was moving and blah, blah, blah. But I think they got a lot of flack from their sh- shareholders about leaving money on the table, like leaving those 100 million users on the table. And... But I do think the uh, what Jim Ryan was saying and where I think he did lie was the fact that he said every PS5 game is built from the ground up. I think he's just lying in it out of his face on that one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that's the part where I think he's lying, um, you know, on that particular Well, no, they piece. just were – they were just, you know, misleading people, you know, not correcting the record. Because these mm-hmm. games have been in right. development for the PS4, yeah. So it wasn't yeah. just like, oh, they just decided this. It's true, and they Nintendo did get did the same thing. They were being a little ambiguous too, right? Because even when people would ask, they wouldn't really answer either. So now they just kind of had to say it up front. Yeah. Otherwise, you know. And it's interesting well, too. Sony, oh, no, go ahead. Sony is Sony has always been like that. I mean, look at look at throughout the history of the of the PlayStation Four. It, the PlayStation 4 dominated. Sony doesn't have to say anything. Now with a new generation that has come about, now all of a sudden they have to start getting into it again. They have to be an Xbox who is very uh, public about what their what their plans are, very transparent, as opposed to Sony who is basically starting from scratch again with a new generation system. I mean, everybody in this panel is very intelligent. Let's talk business. Would you possibly leave 107 million consoles with no games? That's not. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't and, make sense. And that's There's why I think they got out there. Yeah, that's why I think they got flack. And from all the show. systems you sell, you don't make no money. You make money on software. So why would they not? You know, all right, our hardcore fan that go buy PS5, you got the PS5 version, and our fans that got the PS4, all 107 plus of y'all. You got an opportunity to buy the game too. It doesn't make business sense to just leave those sales on the table. Mm-hmm. That's what frustrates me the most because this, this is not the first time. I mean, think no, of the beginning not. of this generation. You know, this was not over yet. When we were transitioned from the Xbox One, the 360 to the Xbox One, it was the same thing. They were still developing for both. Their Titanfall was on both, uh-huh. wasn't it? That's right. Was it not? No, I mean, no. and this is what frustrates me the most about gaming journalists. I mean, just the journalists. That when they report on this stuff, it's like they forget. You know, as King David said, they have the memory of a goldfish. And that's just like the, the, mm-hmm. the funniest thing. And it was just like, man, stop it. And you know, these companies <laughs> got to make money. Well, it's, it's pretty I mean, bad. They have to make it. It's pretty mm-hmm. bad, Megatron, because they were giving Microsoft and Xbox slack for saying ahead of time and being upfront about, oh, um, we're not going to have any, like, re- console, like, exclusives for this Series X for, like, 
one to two years. And now Sony's saying that they'll be supporting the PlayStation 4 for about three to four years. And <laughs> you don't know, it's... Chances are Microsoft will be doing the same. Chances are Microsoft will probably be doing the same I thing. I don't know about three to four spot. years. I don't know. The I mean, it's like that sweet spot. It's going to be, I mean, <laughs> game <laughs> development is game development. To me, if anything, the biggest hurdles between both these consoles is the tech they put inside of it, which is these SSDs. Because you can still make a great damn game with 12 teraflops and 10 teraflops or nine, whatever the hell t- Sony is, nine teraflops. You can still make a great game mm-hmm. and still use mechanical hard drives. But the next step up when it comes to immersion is using these um, mm-hmm. these hard drives, obviously, you know, but there's still, that's going to take time. And we got to get all those people over eventually to just, you know, start adopting this. And the developers have to develop, you know, for this one set, you know, piece of, I guess, seem like tech. You know, again, I'm not the tech guy, but it seems like that's what, believe it or not, they're, all, they're, they're their biggest hurdle. It's just getting into that, that next thing when it comes to these SSDs. But, you know, um, I don't know, man. It's just, uh, I'm frustrated, bro. And I'm high. So, so. Care, <laughs> wow. Right here. I am. Let me hey, you, you, should, guy, you he, should be um, high. Program numbers, put it in the chat for um Megatron. He'd be all right. <laughs> he, I, should, I, he should. <laughs> he should. be high more often because he's bringing the heat tonight, Megatron. Oh yeah. yeah right. Uh, can like I make a, a prediction at least, everybody? Sure. Oh wow! Don't yeah, excitement. Um, <laughs> no, I really think that they said three to four years purely because they don't really know truly how X how long Xbox is going to um support their previous generation consoles so i think they said that as soon as xbox says that they're gonna stop kind of supporting it i think playstation's gonna follow suit and i do believe they're gonna use uh god of war uh ragnarok to do that like i don't trust the i don't trust the 2021 date Mm -hmm. they showed i really see them delaying it and actually using it as the last title that would be uh, a first party cross gen title and that they would use it to kind of show why because they want to go to the next uh, um generation of gaming after God of War. 100% pa- spot on 100%. I think uh well I do think the 2020 Yeah, I think the 2021 is a true day. I think it's God of War Ragnarok's been in development for a long time. And I think, uh, you know, but it's, it's being developed for PlayStation 4 and not PlayStation 5 with an in mind. Well, I like what uh, the joke someone said is all it said was 2021. It's not even a release date. That means they could show up in 2021 and give you some more information on the game. Oh, right. Well, they didn't right. even well, show same, anything. Same thing for Halo. <laughs> That's kidding. <laughs> but you got to remember, too, so, this is not the first time Sony's... Uh, supported a system for a long time ps2 was supported five years after ps3 drop remember them japanese developers was like we're not ready for that we don't care about online and we're going to keep supporting it and technically there's nothing sony can do when the developers come out and say well we're gonna because the install base is so huge and they were struggling with ps3 sales at six hundred dollars but it's like developers like nah five years after the uh, ps3 the PS2 was still getting support in Japan. Still. It was it was ridiculous. But that's what happened. So, you know, it happened again. Mm. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep supporting it because they can't stop the devs from doing what they want. Right. Absolutely. Now, how do you guys... Um, obviously, the launch lineups, they're still kind of being molded right now. We still haven't heard exactly 100% of to like what they're going to be the final um the final ones but we on the playstation side it's looking like as far as some of the exclusives go we'll be getting the astro playroom destruction all-stars which i haven't seen a lot of to be honest godfall which is obviously a timed exclusive spider-man miles morales and sackboy adventures from the xbox series x lineup i'm seeing gears tactics which which was just announced a couple of days ago it it, it'll be there for launch tetris effect connected yakuza yakuza like a dragon yeah Yeah. yakuza like a dragon well it'll be exclusive for a couple of days and they'll release on the other consoles um the falconeer was also it's an indie title it's also going to be a launch game it was confirmed a couple of years uh days ago as well as like some um some xbox one upgrades to some big titles like gears 5 what about the medium and scorn weren't they supposed to be well we haven't gotten the exact dates for those that's the thing like they will be in the launch um 
window. Window. Yeah, that's correct, Centurion. But, oh, okay. but we they haven't announced a confirmed date. I'm assuming, I'm just assuming that one of those games will at least make it for the launch lineup. Uh, I don't know. As far as I know, like we're still wait we might see an Xbox, some kind of a smaller showcase, I'm hoping, at some point, you know, a final one. Uh, because I'm pretty sure they have a lot more to say and to announce at this point. But uh, what do you guys think of these launch lineups? Are they, um, I don't know, which one uh, is looking better at the moment? Well, you got to go with Sony and having Demon Souls uh, at launch, you know. And, and who knows if Ratchet and Clank is in the launch window? They haven't yeah. said yet. So uh, if that can be out in the launch window, you know, they definitely have an upper hand. Uh, I heard but, Ratchet and Clank is supposed to be in the launch window. I, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out, is that game still PS5 only, or is that thing going to be on both platforms as well? I'm a little, I'm I'm wondering that myself now. Who knows at this point? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, I'm assuming that that's yeah. just going to be a PS5 exclusive, but like you said, you yeah. never know, right? Just because of some of the tech I mean, they showed off. Yeah, exactly. The way the tech was shown has me leaning towards that too, Invader. Mm -hmm. absolutely fellas well again some of these comments uh, being made by sony are quite interesting to say the least and i wouldn't be surprised if they have more to say in the time to come uh i'm gonna move along here guys and keeping with the ps5 commentary and theme sony announced after their showcase that some of their games will be seeing a slight price hike going into next gen as of right now, some Sony Worldwide Studios games, some that we mentioned as Demon Souls, uh, Destruction All-Stars, and Spider-Man will be seeing a $70 uh, US pricing at launch. And, hey, we've seen other publishers um, like Take-Two, they've been raising their prices going into next gen. Shockley, I'd like to start off with you here first. Do you think that this is going to be the standard pricing going into next gen for Sony games? Uh, probably for like their big, uh, like first party games. Um, like I think they got the Spider-Man Remaster and Miles Morales to get it up to seventy. If you want that edition, um, but it's we don't know about Microsoft because you know Halo got delayed. That would have been probably kind of our first test um and yeah i'm just trying to think well that's that's going to also look make game pass look really you know enticing um you know if you have yeah, all of, even if even if microsoft goes up to 70 <laughs> it's gonna be like yeah. oh well instead of paying 70 for halo i'll get game pass so yeah but yeah it looks yeah. like it might be the standard at least for the big third party and it looks like major first party uh, from sony at least for now yeah, you know, I don't understand the whole price bump either because on one, you have two companies, two major gaming industry companies saying we're, we're going to support our older consoles, you know, uh, which all those all these titles are going to be cross gen. So why, why would you bump the price up at that time? You know, maybe do it two or three down, years down the line as opposed to right away. I mean, to me, it just seems like, uh, you know, they just want mo more money and they're being greedy. You know, that's just my opinion, but... Are they trying to recover the fact that they are potentially selling uh, one of their consoles, if not both of their consoles, at a loss? Yeah, I mean, eh, it's tough, tough to say. Strategy. We don't know. How, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you saying something? Well, man? hey. No, Game Pass, it just to me, it make, definitely makes the argument of um, the value you get out of Game Pass. And, um, hey, you play 10 of those Game Pass games um, at a, you know at the value of 60 to $70. You didn't pay for your, your console and everything else. Just on that alone, you see the value in that, you know, so. Yeah, but you know what? Let's do a counter argument. If I was a uh, developer like Ubisoft or Activision, why would I want to put my games on game pass knowing that you know these games are expensive to make now they're going to be 70 80 dollars you know that's why i don't know i just it maybe the future seems you know a little bit more uh darker for game pass because games are getting more expensive so you're going to see smaller titles on it as opposed to the bigger titles yeah we got 
um, you know, day and date for for Microsoft titles, but we're still up in the air about some of these big titles uh, and big publishers that might think about moving their games to Game Pass. I think the future is a little dark. What, what about well, the fact that they EA got EA board, access? So. Yeah, I mean, that too. And then I think something in the house. So you figure you're chewing out, you're leaving out some, you're cutting out some of the fat that you would spend anywhere else on retailers. So if you got everything that's in Game Pass, they're saving money that way. Um, you know, so as far as, you know, the cost of... Uh, we'll still get some of the major ones that don't have their own subscription model, like Capcom, mm-hmm. KHQ. So. Mm-hmm. Now, just to put it out there, guys, what if all of a sudden it starts becoming something like, uh, you know, I hate to use it, Disney Plus. You know how there's different ways to get Disney Plus? You could get Disney Plus with ESPN. You can get Disney Plus with yeah. Hulu. Um, or you could get them all as a package deal. And probably going on into the future... We're going to probably we're going to see situations where, you know, you could be like, oh, I want Game Pass with EA Access or I want Game Pass with EA Access and Ubisoft Play basically as like as like a package or piecemeal thing on what games you would prefer to have access to, because there is definitely an advantage in offering a developer consistent, reliable income versus income based on uh the npd of a game yeah it'll definitely work well with games like uh like destiny so but we we gotta also realize the original idea beside with game pass besides just being for the consumer it's also to give other games that people might not have tried an opportunity to see them that's what it's really for they oh yeah, stand. it's not a permanent situation where the developer says I'm not putting my game in there because they're gonna say hell no. How many how many Game Pass people you got? Uh, over ten million. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna well, put my game in there. Give me two three months, and then when you go to take it out, people are gonna be like, listen, I'm gonna buy it before it goes out because I get that Game Pass dis- discount. Also, it's a win win. Oh, well, yeah, I, I get that, but you look at the king of streaming a video, which is Netflix. They have premium content. They they have premium content that comes to – everybody wanna, wants to wait, make movies for them. Everybody right. wants to make TV shows for them. Right. So Xbox at some point needs to go get an Ubisoft to get some of these titles in day and date. Like a uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, like a Far Cry, whatever number we're on now, they need those titles. That's what needs to happen moving forward. Without it, I don't think Xbox uh, Game Pass uh, has a chance. To be honest, I mean, what? I mean, with all the studios, that's just me. Let me, just let me give you a scenario. Studios. Your parent, your parent, right? You buy your your child a bad one. You buy your t- <laughs> no, <my God. laughs> you buy your child an Xbox, right? That's how you gotta look at it. You buy your child an Xbox, you paying for Game Pass. For the price of two games in a year, you getting over 150 titles that you don't have to buy. That's always a win. Financially, that's always a win. It's just a win. As a parent, forget being a gamer. As a parent, you know how many parents you, you can't even really put your kid on punishment and say, I'm not buying no game next month. They got game. Right. Okay, got so let's, let's, use, let's use your analogy, for example. Uh, how much more do you watch Netflix as opposed to Crackle? I don't watch Crackle. I'm a Netflix junkie. That's exactly, but you pay for Netflix when Crackle's free. Why would you do that when it's a better value? Content. <laughs> <laughs> that's, exact, that's exactly my point so at some point xbox needs to uh step their game up and get some of these big big names coming i get you i got yeah you. well they've already you know, started i, I mean it. that's all enough for me but you're also <laughs> under you're also underestimating the popularity of some of these smaller titles that really have just because they don't have that that triple a uh moniker behind them to get some media spotlight i mean there's some really decent indie games out there that are doing quite well in game pass and game pass yeah. is helping them but shine let's be let's be honest nobody's nobody's going coming to game pass to play afterlife okay cool. they're coming they're coming for gears of war 5 they're coming for these big titles see they're not 
<laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I mean, don't soon you're going to have all of the studios talk about clicking on all cylinders. The game is awesome. Pumping out game after game after game from their studios. So, And they still get some of those bigger titles months after release, after they got their, you know, day one releases, got the full $60 from the customer. Yeah. Now and their sales you, dip. Yeah. Now they go to Game Pass. Like yeah, and Metro. you've seen you've seen strides last year with Metro, like Great Point Shock, Metro Exodus, Devil May Cry. Where Bungie's I mean, these about games, to drop the day yeah, DLC, and these games right? are out for what three months? Not even that before they dropped on Game Pass. And now, when you get closer to those release dates, when they're coming, you know, a month after their launch, then that makes more. You know, it gives it a uh, Game Pass a little bit. It makes it more enticing for consumers. Well, and that's all I'm asking. The content also goes beyond just the games. Look at Destiny, for example. You are getting the next expansion free of charge as long as you stay signed up. And that's almost in itself anywhere from a $45 to $80 value, depending on what version of the game that's, you're really getting. Right. And, Man, I mean, a... like, that, it goes beyond just, mm -hmm. hey, you get these games. You're getting content for some of these that's games. Right. And, and we all know that... Um, this is a year-long piece of content, so as long as you pay your monthly subscription to Game Pass, you are going to have access to this content. Yeah, that, that's that Xbox. Point, and that's exactly yeah. what Donna was talking about. That's see, Donna, dig, 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 dig your answer right there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They made a deal, and that's a big one. So that's good. Yeah, definitely, fellas. Um, guys, I will move us. On to another topic um, relating to uh, some stuff that we were talking about just a few minutes ago, but on the Xbox side of things. And recently, Xbox marketing personnel took to Twitter about the Xbox Series X launch lineup. A marketing exec, uh, Cindy, uh, she was on Twitter. And she, uh, well, she had stated that uh, having Halo at launch would have been tremendous but we were not reliant on massive titles to drive console adoption. Our players will have thousands of games from four generations of Xbox available to play at launch. So, I mean, it's a very interesting comment coming from Cindy over at Xbox Marketing. Um, Megatron, you know, I got, I'll hit you up here on this one, pal. What do you think of Cindy's comments about not being reliant on, like, a massive game like Halo Infinite, for example, at launch? Because there's other massive games that are coming out. You know, there may be third party. We got Cyberpunk 2077, which is probably the biggest game that's coming out this generation because Halo's not coming out, unfortunately. Yeah. And you got Valhalla. Which is, you know, teaming up with Microsoft and I think marketing now. I think they have the marketing deal for that too. So that's why. And then you still, and like, let me say he's got 750 games. I got over 700 games. I'm bringing all that stuff with me. And in the beginning of this generation right now, what are we doing? We'll be taking advantage of the features of the new generation consoles. The VV, was it the VRF, whatever it's called, just whatever it is, uh, the 120 frames per second with gaming. I don't know all it takes, though. So I don't. <laughs> I had it. I really had it. Don't laugh. Don't worry. We're funny. right here with you. We no, got I you. Got you. I got you. You got me. Stand <laughs> me up. Stand me up. My back. <laughs> so that's it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you got all these other features that are coming along with these new generation consoles. It's going to be, you know, like we were talking before, a year, two years, maybe before we even start to see the full. You know, uh, you know, we get the full effects of everything, the 12 teraflops and the 9 teraflops. So it's, it's, it is what it is, man. Just play your games, you know, play your damn games and enjoy it. Sit back, smell the roses and be like, yo, we're in the next gen. We got that piece of hardware right there in front of us and, uh, you know, enjoy. That's it. To me, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it is what it is. Hey, they'll survive without Halo. Unfortunately, it's not going to be there, but it's a game. You know, the more I look back on it now, I'm glad they delayed Halo because Cyberpunk is going to be a behemoth of a title. I mean, we're talking about uh, it's going to be a game for the generation, just like you said, Megatron. Uh, people are going to play it as, as they're going to play Valhalla for these next year or two. That's all they're going to be playing. So, 
Um, you know, is is it good that Halo got delayed? Probably because it was gonna get eaten alive by Cyberpunk. Sorry to say that. Multiplat. Multiplat. Listen, Craig ain't no slouch. My boy Craig ain't no slouch. (laughs) (laughs) Halo is Halo is just as big, if not bigger. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, like I said before, five shows ago, we were talking about Cyberpunk 27. And uh and then they started talking about when they started playing that little miniature voice clip of uh of the banished, mm-hmm. you know, that just that just kind of just made me literally, you know, that moved my that moved uh, Cyberpunk to number two, as far as I'm concerned, especially anything that has involved uh, multiplayer and in the potential of having 100 frames per second. You know, I've never played a game playing 120 frames per second. So that to me was just that was enough for me. And then, like I said, uh, S- 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 Halo is one of those universes that's just like still has yet to be matched. And, you know, it's only as good as its last game. You compare it to itself, as my boy Lemon would always say. You know, it's just that damn good. The universe as a whole is so much potential in that. You know, you know, Cyberpunk's a new IP. Slow down a little bit. We, we're hyped for it. I saw it behind the scenes. Had the pleasure of seeing them making it, you know, and I had a, you know, firsthand demo of it. But, like, still, like, you know, you know, Halo's there. Halo's there, you know. So don't uh, don't throw it under the bus too, uh, too quickly. Yeah, but we also got to realize who Halo is. Halo is the first party title king. Yes. The only shooter to beat it is Call of Duty and it's on everything. Let's not get crazy. They don't compare Halo games sales to other games. They compare Halo sales to blockbuster movie weekends. Movie. Yeah, I mean, hey, Let's not get crazy. <laughs> yeah, Halo's part of pop culture. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Like, it's, yeah, maybe it's, I was just talking shit, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let, you know, hold up here, because I'm a Halo retard. Nobody was more upset about Halo mm-hmm. than me, but don't bring it out and it's not ready, please, because that, that's just something you can't do. But, uh, uh, you know, but, you know, there's a question that nobody seems to want to ask Sony. Does the PlayStation 5 give you PS5 enhancements for older games? Mm. Can anybody answer that for me? Uh, so no. Select titles get a boost mode. Oh, like the this Pro? Is what they've said. Pro. Like yeah. The Pro did? Oh, then I'm good because that means nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that, that even the S, old was, even the S, dude, that auto HDR. Don't work. Dragon, that yeah. boost mode was garbage, bro. It was, it was exactly. It means it, if they doing the same thing they did with the pro, it means absolutely nothing because that that boost mode is it didn't do nothing. <laughs> so okay, just wanted to know because I never hear them say, "Oh, we can add HDR." You know, you know, like like Microsoft touting, "Oh, some games that's thirty frames unlocked can be pushed to sixty. Some sixty unlocked can be pushed to one twenty. We didn't hear none of that from Sony. That's what I was waiting to hear. Some enhancements. Tell me I could get better lighting in God or what something. Nothing. I just want. I just maybe maybe somebody else knew something I didn't. But all right, I'm done. You get better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, select titles are just gonna be boosted. I mean, I'm there with uh, Shockley on that one. They're not. Uh, I mean, it, it's interesting when they go after the the Series S for not having the uh, the One X upgrades. Here's but oh, shut up, Siri. Anyways. Um, sorry, my Siri just kind of went off. But anyways, um, they go after the the Series S, but then they won't talk about the actual enhancements for, um, you know, what you're going to be getting with the next-gen PlayStation consoles. And Sony hasn't really been talking a lot about that. They're kind of keeping it a little more hush-hush. I mean, Xbox is t- always touting how their consoles are going to be upgrading all their old games, which is fantastic from the game's library. So, I mean, you do bring up a really interesting question there, Dragons, because not a lot of people are really asking those questions right now. Yeah, that's why we need real me- real gamers in the media world, because that's not being answered. But if you go look at Major Nelson's um, interview this week, um, those questions was answered with the Series S, and I was very impressed with that, because you had a lot of fake news on uh, Twitter. Who did he interview with? Uh, Jason Ronald was on there. Jason yes. Ronald, Mr. Beard himself. The beard, <laughs> and he he and they explained we didn't just take out the disc drive, and they explained how they reach in the 1440p and what they did. It's, it's it's definitely informative, and it definitely makes your purchase even more warranted. If you buy that system, you are not being left out. Just resolution, which I told y'all don't mean don't make no sense to half the other people. So, 
It's a good. It's a good. It's a good listen. It's a good yep, listen. Go check it out. Yeah, definitely. Invader. Yes, sir. You know the gameplay that you have in the background just really exposes your your gameplay skills. Mm. Oh, shots fired. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is now two weeks. Oh, this is two weeks in the oh. bat. This is two weeks batter. Oh, right let's now. hear this. God. I'm still waiting All on right. your gameplay, Jeremy. Dude, I'm wanting to give you some Tony Hawk, but it's like I don't want to give you just one clip because then there'll be a lot of me on the ground. No, I really <laughs> like. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to like edit some footage together for you from Tony Hawk. <laughs> I'm so- no, I- I'm sorry, Century, and I really need to get Jeremy's footage in stat because he's been talking about how he's like so good at Soda Drinker Pro that I gotta get. I gotta get his <laughs> oh. gameplay. Oh, I, I those- thought I thought he was uh, doing that one game that was uh, uh, what was it on the shower with your dad? No, I'm, pl- oh. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Speaking of bad parenting. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, I thought I was going to be messy. Oh, man. Oh, uh, hey, look. That, that gameplay. That gameplay looks better than my Battletoads gameplay because I kept dying over and over and my TV. I was ready to just throw it out of the window, man. So, yeah, that's looks pretty good to me, man, with your. Uh, your, uh, game I like the city. I like the city scene. I didn't even know it had night scenes. That I'm going mm-hmm. to yeah. Game. Oh no, it does. It has like one or two night missions, which is pretty cool. It has a nice variety, actually. Um, you'd be surprised. And I, I don't know. I just, I had a, a whale of a time with this game. I know a few of the, uh, the people in the chat were talking about it too. Like personally, Ace Combat Seven is one of my favorite games this gen. I, I just, I think it's a fantastic game. We need more flight simulation games or fighter simulation games, I should say. Um. Thanks. Uh, cool genre to say the least but um all right fellas we will move on to some other news here probably be our last topic tonight and an interesting rumor popped up during this past week and uh, speaking with the game beat podcast journalist jeff grubb stated that he had heard that microsoft and bungie had been acquisition discussions but the <laughs> Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> but then they they couldn't settle on a price. Now, other journalists have chimed in stating that they've heard sim- similar things regarding these talks between the two uh, companies. However, various Bungie employees have stated that this isn't true, including the boss, Pete Parsons. Uh, so it's, it's kind of conflicting reports going around here because to me, where there's smoke, there's fire, but... I don't know, maybe they just don't want to talk about it, obviously, for uh, legal reasons. Jeremy, bud, I'll go with you on this topic. Now, despite Bungie's claims, what's the the likelihood of Bungie wanting to get back with Microsoft? Exceptionally low. <laughs> Why do you think that is? I mean, uh, Bungie for Bungie, there's absolutely no reason for them to get back with Xbox. No reason whatsoever. Number one, Bungie is a, in great financial position. I mean, I, I mean, why would you want them to ruin that? So right now they're self-publishing, meaning they have full uh, Destiny ownership, and they basically have the ability to do whatever they want. You know, so literally, I mean, the only thing I could see them uh, having Xbox purchase them is to get filthy rich. You know, their owners. So and that's the only reason. So it would have to be, that's why I think you heard rumors of an astronomical number, which it's going to take that much because Destiny is a beast. Uh, on the other hand is you don't want a situation uh, where like, you know, when EA bought Bioware and everybody just ups and leaves, will that happen with Xbox? I doubt it, but um, you know, there's no reason for, for, uh, for Bungie to get back with Xbox. So I think, I think there were just rumors and, uh, you know, the journalists rolled with it because they liked the clicks. They liked the dollars coming in, the marketing dollars coming in, and that's all it was. Yeah, it's just it's interesting with Bungie because uh, after they broke up with Activision, obviously with Bungie as a uh, – they they got really chummy with Microsoft. I mean, obviously, they've been showcasing their expansions and Game Pass, for example, and getting a lot of the content back into Game Pass. It just seems to me that they're getting really friendly again, which I just found kind of illuminating personally. Um, it's nice to they've see... They've always been friendly. They've always been friendly. 
for the last past, I can say, at least four years. They've been friendly. Yeah. Well, I, mean, know, I, just, I mean, I got so much even, to say, but then I'm not going to say a damn thing. But I do think that the rumors are true. Like, and I don't know what else more, <laughs> but I'm just going to say that, bro. Like, it sucks because I'm limiting myself. So, what, okay, okay. You you think the rumors are true. What makes you believe that the rumors are true? I mean, give me, just give me some examples. Besides, I'll just besides, say one thing that besides was on, that what was reported. The only thing I can say was that immediately when Bungie announced their separation with uh, Activision, um, right after mm-hmm. that, uh, Phil was like, I'm looking forward to uh, working with you guys. Immediately right after, like it was in the, within minutes. And that's it. That's about as far as I'm going to go. Because yeah, I just don't you know what? There. And there I is don't some- even there is some truth to that Megatron because you, you of all people know how much Phil loves destiny. the destiny series. Destiny is a great game. I don't, it's just like, I can't, I just, I don't want to go there with certain things, but destiny is a great game. I see the appeal in it. Um, and I think it's nothing wrong with, you know, having that support of a company like Microsoft backing you on your vision. You know, you see all these other game developers saying, how great it is to work with Microsoft and they're letting them create, create, create. They've been speaking out. You know, I don't think Microsoft's making them say these things. Yeah, um, but I mean, financially, Bungie doesn't need Xbox. So why would you go to them other than the fact that you want to get rich? You know, the ownership. Oh, I don't I don't know where Bungie is financially, but, you know, they're publishing their own games. Right. So, I mean, I can see them saying, hey, well, you know, with the helping of Microsoft, you know, and. We, we do with more the more money, the more credit, you know, uh, creative financial, you know, creative freedom we have to do what we want to do. And yeah, but they and I always that's... wash the dolls and sense of things. Not that they yeah. haven't already, I mean, how long has it been? Has there even been a year yet? How long? When, when was the announcement that they uh they left? Isn't it was it this year? I think it was last, last year, year last I think. Year. So it's been it's been almost a year now. So I mean, still, I mean. I, I don't know where they are financially. Um, I don't think it's a bad deal that uh, Bungie and, and Microsoft partner up again. As long as, you know, they're able to create the games they want to create. You know, we, For all we know, they can create Bungie. And then because, I mean, they're creating uh, Destiny. They have the roadmap for that for the next, what, two, three years. And then they may want to just do another game, too, as well. So you can't see the value of them having the backing of Microsoft. I mean, these guys, they want to create games. And, um, you know, you, yeah. they, can, they can branch off and do something else for all we know. Well, also, the environment is way different from when they left um, the old Xbox studios now with Phil and uh, the basic the rebranding uh, into Xbox game studios. Uh, just the mm-hmm. culture there just seems to be a lot more, well, a lot better for developers. And then you, you see all these uh, game devs, all these uh, different companies. Uh, like Obsidian, Double Fine, uh, these game companies that they had issues with Microsoft and then they resolved them. And even they're in the mix. They're exactly, exactly right. And then you got... Well, that's that's a great uh, example or a great point because Obsidian and all these other companies were in the best financial uh, situations as opposed to Bungie. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. So again, I ask the question... Why would Bungie want to get into a situation with Xbox when they have the creative freedom and the financial freedom to do whatever they want? I just, I'm mean, that's just the question. Um, See, um, I, I I forget who I think it was when uh, Matt Booty told the story or whoever was actually the one that was kind of uh, helping push the purchase for I believe it was Double Fine. In an interview, I remember him saying that um, that him and the owner of Double Fine, before they made the purchase, would greet each other in the mornings. And he's like, sometimes I'd send him a picture of like my pancakes with a number written in, you know, whipped cream on the pancakes. Basically, nonchalantly throwing a number at the company. <laughs> and I, I really do think that um, uh, what is, Bungie is doing their own creative thing. But I'm pretty sure they are getting that uh, once in a while or early morning text of a number. And one of these days, you never know, they could bite. And we're just assuming oh, that Bungie's in like 
good finances. I mean, I'm not saying that they're doing poorly, but we really remember those numbers. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. Remember those numbers they were throwing out there in the beginning? How much it was going to cost? They were it was costing them yes. to make Destiny yes. Two. Was it five hundred million? I don't know if that's. I mean, it's all rumors now. Fifty, three fifty. It's all rumors now. But remember those numbers? I mean, yeah. it costs a bank. It costs Destiny. Money. They just put it this way: the marketing deal alone that Sony dished out uh, to get Destiny exclusivity rights, whether it was download content, paid for the goddamn game. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and other than that, that's profit right there. So. Again, Bungie's in a great financial position with, uh, you know, they can make whatever they want. That's why I think, you know, we're talking about it as opposed to. It's something we got to look at. The rumors is probably they had an idea, especially after this deal was made with Destiny 2. But a lot of things come with Microsoft when you are a developer that you don't have to worry about, like 401ks and dental plans, besides all that other stuff. So. And they have a big marketing budget that they don't have to pay. No matter how much money Destiny uh, Bungie got, they ain't got Microsoft money. So that would be finances that you don't don't have to worry about it yourself. It's like being an artist in the music business. When you have a major label, you don't worry about promotion and billboards and TVs and commercials on YouTube. You don't have to do that. But if you're an independent artist... You got to do that footwork yourself. And Bungie is not at the point where they like a publisher like Activision. Let's not get crazy. They ain't EA. They ain't Microsoft. They're not Sony. They're not Ubisoft. They're not because everybody ain't they're playing. They're not. <laughs> Everyone's not playing. <laughs> so, no, yeah, but they I don't got that kind of money. I would, like, say, also- I would say that Bungie is in a position uh, just like CD, CD Project Red is in their own financial. They can do whatever they want. You know, I think Project that... Red, which I'm going to clean up some real crazy rumors. Microsoft would never buy CD Projekt Red. It doesn't financially make sense. They're worth $8.9 billion. That's not a financial, that's not something you a, a company will buy. Bungie ain't nowhere near like that. They don't have that type of money. Not that type of revenue. They don't uh, have With Destiny? Yeah. No, no. Nah, Nah. I, I feel like those two companies are in total different situations. Yeah, You're talking yeah. about one company that is player, that is firmly player, grounded in the base. industry that they're in. Right. Like 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 Bungie, don't get it don't I would never just they make they made my, my favorite game of all time, but Dude, Bungie's they're, they're a roller coaster. But they they're not they're not in that financial category or being able to do they're not they're not a uh they're not a big publisher. They're just not. They're still developers. What a great game. And it's also definitely got to be an advantage if you're working in house with 15 other studios when it comes yeah, it to is. Development, development ideas and certain things, techniques that you may not have to throw it off because you got all these creative people. And I think I think there's something to do. Oh, I gotta check and see, but where they just come together and you know, if you need this or you need that, or you know, have this idea, that idea, you know, they work together. Yeah, I mean, so they, but and, and it's just it's just it just gets those gears turning, you know, well, a lot smoother. I mean, because if they thought if they thought they could make it. Why even sign a deal with Activision? Do it yourself. But that costs a lot of money. That costs a lot of money. And, you know, Cliff Belinsky went through that. Well, you also see, like, <laughs> like I said, it's a, roller, it it's a roller coaster. That's um, right. One minute they have a really great piece of DLC, and the next two pieces uh, completely push a large f- amount of the fan base away, and then people stop playing because there's not a whole lot of other people playing. Right. And so it's this constant up and down thing. Like one minute money's good, next minute, all right, what can we do that drives innovation? Yeah, it's definitely more about the finances more than anything else that they would sign a deal because independence means everything come out of you. And like I said, we, we watched a lot of people, oh, I'm going to start my own company, and they're mm-hmm. not here today, and they're not here. It's easy to say so, that. So I just looked at some research on the net, and it's estimating that Bungie's worth about $2 billion, which is nowhere clear. It's nowhere close to CD Projekt's red right. estimated, you know, seven and $9 million. Uh, however, you know, they significantly went up, uh, you know, I'm not reading from the article now, but they, I know significantly they went up, uh, you know, after the development cycle of destiny one and two, you know, they're, they're worth that because 
because of Destiny 1 and 2. I think when they left Microsoft, they were probably worth uh, about $500 million. Yeah, easily. Yeah. That's definitely the truth. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Well, look how much like they bought uh, Minecraft for. Was it $1.2 billion? So Right. Right, they're willing to spend. I the think money. they, I think they, per, yeah, I think they purchased my uh, Minecraft for like two point three billion. Yeah, but well, could you, could you say the player base is anywhere near the size uh, of Minecraft as it is on Destiny? Not oh even no, close. not even close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> matter See, of fact, that, that's one that's thing I think Microsoft is looking at. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's Microsoft's cash cow right there is Minecraft. I mean. Well, that's the it's game that will never die. Minecraft's huge. That game. You're right. That's that's why I want part two. That's why I want Minecraft two, but it's never going to come. Minecraft two, yeah. more crap. They're they're gonna, they going they going to keep updating that same game like they should be. Two point oh, three point oh, and that's rate, 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 rate that's my boy one hundred should say race tracing. Race <laughs> tracing. I remember that. <laughs> you know, yeah. race tracing. Race <laughs> wow. tracing. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you know the question has yet to be answered is whether my uh, Minecraft's going to get an update um, day and day with the launch of the Series X. I hope it does. I hope it does. It's on PC, though. RTX ray tracing. If you have a ray tracing graphic card, so, a, 20, a twenty series. We PC. haven't. We haven't really seen an actual official. At least, the, maybe if I explain it right, an actual official Series X style um, event or any kind of inside Xbox that shows actual footage for. Assassin's Creed Valhalla or some of the top AAA games actually playing mm. on the Series X. I mean, like, I'm sorry, but everything that has come out has been some very low resolution stuff, and uh, yeah, I PCs. think it would be I think it would be nice to actually start showing what this console is uh, capable of. And why you want to play all your third parties on this console? Yeah, and I, I do. I do think that's the reason why they waited so long in showing off gameplay because of that particular reason. Mm-hmm. They're waiting for developers to, you know, get in get in groove with the technology. Uh, they're just giving time and times everything now just to to see exactly what the X is capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tim's been heavy on Twitter just over the weekend a little bit, saying that he's he's hearing more and more of a, uh, you know, uh, more news is going to come out on the uh, games running on the, the newer console. So we'll see. What? What? Tim, Tim's Tim, heavy uh, on uh, Twitter. Uh, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll see, man. I hope. I hope. I, you know, I, I think it's you know that's it's fair to say that it's it's we need to see some stuff. Uh, running on these consoles, you know, that's what it's that. You want to see what it all translates to, you know, twelve point. Two or you know nine point two teraflops. You want to see what it trans- translates to, you know. So uh, you know it's time to uh, show, mm-hmm. show. I don't, I don't, I don't have any doubts. And again, I'm, I'm just, I'm more just look, so looking forward to features of you know, the faster loading times and um, the uh, frames per second performance. And uh, you know that's it. You know I'm, I'm kind of satisfied. You know even still. No, so Boy, Megatron on here fraud and you looking for that X nine hundred eight. That or the nine fifty. So I'm I'm looking at that too. So but uh you know I'm 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 between you and my uh, boy Tim, man. I, I I know y'all got me when it comes to those the tech side of things. So appreciate it. Well I'm mad at him he ain't here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give him a three o'clock in the morning text on his phone. You watch. <laughs> Break his sleep. <laughs> do it, do it. Well, I mean, I'm expecting a some kind of a, a showcase from Microsoft as well for the uh, Series X because they were teasing something, I think, at their last event about s- showing something at a later date. I think Matt Booty had, like, teased something. So, I wouldn't... I mean, to me, I, I just think, I think they should, and I think there is something there. There is still time enough time to do something like that to showcase series x gameplay because it's true uh, what centurion brings up that we still we haven't seen enough gameplay and we still need some confirmed dates on some of these titles whether it be the medium scorn and a few others out right. there it would be nice to have Switch. like high profile announcements from them instead of like doing random searches <laughs> 
Yeah, wishful thinking. We got the Tokyo Game Show coming up in a couple of days. The twenty fourth, Microsoft is going to um, be doing their show all in Japanese. Unless that's changed, I haven't seen anything yet. Um, but hopefully, something to come out that from the uh, Japanese side of things when it comes to uh, the type of games they have. You know, uh, wishful thinking, but uh, we'll see. But didn't they have an event? Well, I, I have it, but their press conference that they was going to do got released, got leaked, and they canceled it. Because I have it. <laughs> yeah. They had something. I the mm-hmm. They were sitting down talking to Phil and a few other people, yeah. Explaining certain things. Nice studio setup, Xbox studio. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I saw that, and but it didn't answer. really have any gameplay to it, right? No, they showed gameplay, but you didn't know what it was on. Mm. It had gameplay, but, you know, it was like, like trailers. That's what it had. Because that's what they were supposed to really announce. Xbox. Box Game Pass and EA Play together, mm. but it got leaked. That's why they just let it go. <laughs> but yeah, they're supposed to do something. Those I don't know who be show. I don't is. know who be leaking their stuff, man. But they need to get fired because <laughs> they, Microsoft be getting jammed up, man, jammed up seriously. But they stuff hitting the market before they wanted to. Yeah, it seems like every year, man. That was the start of the show. EA Play combined with um uh. Game Pass. Uh, Game Pass and uh, the new to two ninety nine price point to me is just like how do you not how do you lose with that man? You know, um, I know they don't talk sales numbers, but I'm curious to see how it how well it does um, uh, this holiday season and launch and stuff, man. I think it's gonna do really really well. So. Well, thanks to you, <clears throat> thanks to you, Megatron. Um, the T viruses took over the planet because you take <laughs> everybody, so. <laughs> More people have a three hundred dollars than five hundred dollars, but you there know. you go. Because <laughs> that's kind of steep. My fault. Uh, yeah, that was your fault. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this guy called me like twenty times, warning me. I said, "Man, you crazy? Ain't nothing gonna happen." Look what man, happened. This twenty twenty's been a hell of a year, man. I just want to rock. <laughs> yeah, I just want to be over with, man. I'm glad you know we're all still here. And uh, maintain it because and include the people in the chat. And thanks again to Techno Fabulous with the uh, the super chat, man. Um, was it was it Techno Fabulous? Yeah, the Techno yeah. Buffalo? It was Techno Fabulous. Okay, I didn't want to pronounce yeah. his name wrong. Yeah, thanks to you know everyone coming by, man. It's just uh, I'm glad everybody's here, man. This has been a hell of a year. We got a lot a lot to look forward to when it comes to gaming. Whether you like PlayStation, Xbox, I'm going to try to get both, um, and another television. But uh, yeah, man, we just got to keep our heads above water and just. Uh, don't take things too far, man. It's just it's video games. So have fun. <clears throat> yeah, you said it, Mega. Well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up for tonight's episode. And I got to say, it was another really good talk tonight regarding the recent PlayStation Showcase, various Xbox comments, and Bungie rumors, and so much more. As always, guys, I have to give a shout to everybody that tuned in and watched the show live. A huge thank to every to everybody that tuned in and participated in the chat and if you guys haven't done so already then consider dropping a like sharing this episode out and subbing to keep up to date on all upcoming txr shows now let's get to the outros starting with our guest 108 dragons tv bud it was a real pleasure having you on with us this evening great stuff tonight where can everybody follow you at um, you can follow me at 108 Dragons TV on every social media and especially that YouTube channel. And we got some nice videos coming out this week, man. I got some real funny stuff to do. But uh, I, I really, really, really thank y'all for having me. Unfortunately, we can't have our dinners in New York because it is craziness. But this is the closest I can get to the gods and say what up, man. I appreciate it, man. And I'll take it any day, anytime, man. Appreciate soon, y'all. bro. Soon, 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 man. It's great to have you, bro. Like, <laughs> you. you guys want good quality content. You know, his setup is just amazing. The the, the audio, the the video is just bar none, like the best I've ever seen. That's it. Appreciate you can even that. see some of the, you know, the, the knowledge you spread to the other people in the community and uh, how, how better their, their setup has gotten. And I'm working on mine still, so. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. <laughs> That's right. it, man. It was great to have you, bro. Like I'm, I'm so happy to finally get you, to have you here on the show, man. Just, uh, yeah, I'm teasing over here, man. Thanks for coming through, yeah, I bro. Pre- no, I, pre- I watch you consistently, <laughs> man. That's why I be, I be in the chat talking to y'all, uh, to the people of the chat, trying to get them information in there because I just love doing it, man. But I appreciate Absolutely. everybody, man. Definitely. 
Yeah, you got that right. Uh, I'll move on to the TXR panel members, and I'll start with Megatron. Buddy, I know you were uh, working through some stuff tonight, but, uh, you know, oh always great gosh, to get high you. Times. <laughs> <laughs> high times. High times, oh my gosh. Dealing with this pain, man, but I'm glad I pulled through the show, man, because I was, you know, on the fence about even trying to show up. But like I said, when... When a wait was going to be uh be on the show, man, I had to be here, man. But as always, hit me up on Twitter, Megatron underscore one nine seven five. You want to play some games? Hit me up on Xbox, man. That's what it's all about. Games. My gamer tag is Megatron one. Yep, check me out. You heard it, folks. Mm-hmm. Definitely uh, give him an ad there. Send him a message. Bug the crap out of him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeremy, buddy, Jeremy Downer. Uh, excellent show, my friend. Uh, great points. Where can everybody follow you at? Uh, you can find me on Xbox, Downer Space J, and PlayStation. Uh, you can find me at Green Knight 7 all one word. Um, the G and the N are capitalized. Uh, you can also find me on Rumble, which is a new platform, a uh, new video streaming platform. It's like YouTube, except, uh, yeah. Um, you can find me. It's also Downer J. Um, you guys get a chance to uh, make some money on there. So if you're a content creator, uh, you can make money on Rumble. Uh, I have about fifteen dollars in my account. You can cash out at fifty dollars, and really, you do nothing for uh, for joining. You do nothing to to get cash. It's free money. So check out Rumble uh, if you haven't already, and it's a pretty good deal. It, yeah, I've heard and I must that. say, and I must say, Jeremy's an awesome parent, by the way. It's all jokes. People don't know, don't <laughs> take things serious. <laughs> he is one awesome parent. I've seen it firsthand. <laughs> yep, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, I've I've made 15 bucks on Rumble too by just posting my videos. Um, and what happens is it gets it gets nominated or vetted. And after that process is done, uh, then you you get selected by the people who watch you or follow you, and um, you face off against other videos. And if you win, then you get free money. You know, so I got fifteen bucks already. But even by just uh, you know going on there and just ranking the videos, swiping left or right automatically gives you tickets, and those tickets are used for a raffle. Uh, and then you get free money that way too. So just go to Rumble, check out Rumble, and it's pretty cool. What you gonna do? See, being that you're a celebrity, what you gonna do with your first check? Fifteen oh, dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna spend Xbox it on those seventy dollar <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation games, baby. Bang bang. <laughs> Hey, it's oh. uh, you know, it's fifteen, twenty bucks that you didn't have already, right? So uh, splurge. Exactly. Uh, Dragon, I really appreciate you coming on again. Uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, he's a good man, a very respectable man, very knowledgeable man. I appreciate you coming on, man, and it was great to see you on video. Even though I got to meet you in person, uh, even better. So we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Gentlemen, as always. Uh, moving on to another gentleman, actually. Uh, Centurion, buddy. Uh, loved your stuff tonight. Where can everybody follow you at? Well, before that, um, I do want to say thanks to 108 Dragons for being here, or Lemon, as I call him. Um, I mean, God, I've met so many people in the community, and I'm not trying to be cheesy, but... When it comes back to reflecting or telling stories about the people you meet in the community, 108 Dragons is going to be one of those people that has definitely had a positive impact on my life, just like everybody else here. And I mean, to be able to do another show with him, anytime I get to do a show with him is like a blast to me. I look forward to it every time. So definitely thanks for being here. And also, thank you, Downer, for letting me take a jab at you with that one joke. Hopefully, you know it was a joke, right? <laughs> Dude, I, was that, to... I was not. <laughs> that was pretty fun, buddy. Oh, uh, dear. I'm sorry. Is this like, that is an actual game. Anyways. Um, but, yeah, for those who are interested, please follow me over on Xbox Live, Twitter, and YouTube, definitely, at Centurion1307. You can also find me here every Sunday night on TXR. And also be sure to check me out every Saturday night over on the Shop Podcast with PTK Blam. Yeah, excellent show, by the way, last night. Um, 
All right, fellas, I'm moving on to the last member on the list, Shockley, Eric Shockley. Uh, again, great show, buddy. Where can everybody follow you at? Yeah, uh, you can follow me at Shock Nero on Twitter, Easy Shock on Xbox Live. And yeah, thanks to our guest at 108 Dragons. And he has a pretty good show tonight. Uh, see you next week. All right. Again, great show tonight, guys. Uh, I'm Invader. You guys can find me and my content over at YouTube on my channel, Invader Gaming. And you can chat with me over at Twitter at Invader underscore 1986. Guys, we cannot wait to talk games next week. We will all see you next Sunday. We'll probably be all kinds of other crap to talk about. And yeah, guys, keep safe.